make. And what today's uh, video is about is to try to summarize a lot of what we've already learned and see if we can draw a few conclusions on uh, our frequency analysis stuff where we're looking at non-harmonic, I'm sorry, non-sinusoid waves and finding out what the harmonics are. So the very first wave we're going to look at, we're going to look at square wave and we look at it in the time domain. We have both the one that we rebuilt and then also the uh, ideal square wave. And we will look at the frequency spectrum of that up to 100, up to 100 uh, harmonic, the 100th harmonic. And I am trying to use the same scale factor on all of these that we're using here. So that all of them, the lowest number we go down to is 10 to the minus third or one, one thousandth of a vote. Now sometimes they go up higher than one vote because I didn't scale my uh, everything to make it exactly the same. But this will be a real good reference to compare to and we'll probably come back to the square wave fairly often, the square wave uh, spectrum. Okay. The very first one that we tried to create when we were trying to create fuzz on our uh, musical instrument, we used uh, the overdrive system. And basically what the overdrive is, is this schematic right here. And we're running greater input into it than what the uh, amplifier can handle so it starts clipping the waveform. And I basically have done two of those. So the first one we did, we had a gain of 10, and we had an input of 2, and it cuts off a little bit below 15 volts, and so we ended up with this waveform where we had the top cut off. And then when we, we uh, did the uh, frequency analysis of that, we had just about as many harmonics on it as we do in the... Uh, in the square wave, the funny thing is that we do have quite a few even harmonics in this one. So it's kind of interesting in that particular point. do want to point out here, I wrote harmonic plus one. This very first bar is the DC offset. After that we actually get into, uh, we actually get into the actual harmonics. The first, the second bar right here. And sometimes it's the first bar, depending on how symmetric the waveform is. Uh, that bar there that's in the uh, two position is actually the first harmonic or the, the fundamental frequency. Okay, actually I said that this is probably the same as the, uh, has about as many harmonics as the square wave. I'm incorrect, because notice the scale factor up here is 10 at the beginning, so... 0 0.0001 of that would be this number right here, and a lot of those have cut off, so we're not nowhere near the harmonics of the square wave on this one. Okay, now we do it, and we're going to go with a little bit higher gain on this one, so we'll look at the time frequency. And you see that we cut it off a lot quicker. What I did was I increased the gain by decreasing the uh, gain resistor. And uh, as I did that, I'm chopping it off quicker, so I'm ending up a little bit more of a square wave. So we'll look at the frequency of that. The frequency spectrum. And the frequency spectrum is a little bit higher than it was you see, I still have my 10 up here for my main, for the maximum value, so 0 0.001 would be right here at where it says 0 0.01 on this, if we do the ratio, and we're out quite a few frequencies higher. We also have a lot of even harmonics on this. So this is kind of an interesting waveform. Uh, as you can see, that's probably the kind of overdrive that my guitar amplifier has when it says it's metallic. Okay. Now we'll go to the second one we did, which was what I called the output clip, where we were 
hard clip in the output and that basically with the schematic if you look at it is where I put some diodes right across the output of it so it shorts it out once it gets above 0.7 volts with those type of diodes. If you went to uh, germanium diodes it would be even lesser less volts would be about 0.3. So we look at the waveform of that with a point with just one set of diodes and you see that it doesn't clip near as a doesn't have near the harmonics that the square wave does. It dies off about 60 right here. And we got the same reference point that we did on the other one. So that one, and I don't have any DC offset here. You see my very first number here is, is the second bar. Second bar is really the first harmonic. Uh, that has to do with a little bit of the way I set things up, unfortunately. And... Uh, uh, that anyway we it dies off a lot quicker and if we look at the waveform of that the waveform of it you see it climbed quite a bit on the uh, sinusoid before it started clipping off uh, okay now let's go to with three diodes on it you see it climbed a lot more and we would suspect that we'd have less harmonics on this one. So let's see what we got. And when we do, yeah, the harmonics die off a lot quicker. They die off a lot quicker and there's fewer of them. So this actually, uh, we have less high frequency in this one. By the way, we did a uh, 500 hertz going in, so our reference right here of this one, the, harm, the uh, fundamental would be 500. 40 times 500 would be 20,000. Yep, 20,000. Uh, I was calculating my decimal point there. And uh, human hearing ends at about 22,000. So we could barely be here in this high frequency out here. And us old people, we may not even have the 20, 20 kilohertz. But anyway, uh, this one, it died off a lot faster than it did with the square wave. Let's go back and look at the square wave for a reference. Yeah, you see the square wave there a lot higher at that, at that value there. So, that one was a nice, uh, nice clip, and uh, that would give us a little bit less fuzziness, I guess, a little less harsher sound. Okay, now let's go to the really interesting one, the feedback clipping circuit, which if you remember, is one where I put the diodes in the feedback in parallel to a uh, gain resistor. And we see what that one will do. Uh, let's see. We'll look at the frequency, and this is the one that had to, or the time domain, and this is the one that had the kind of rounded waveform. We would suspect that it doesn't have a whole lot of high harmonics in it because of the way it is clipping it. So we will look at the harmonics. And you see that they die off very quickly. Uh, there is a quite a few lower frequency harmonics in here, but again, they die off very quickly. So this is kind of nice, and it would give a different, completely different sound. So anyhow, that's looking at them in the frequency spectrum, or the frequency domain, if that's the way you would prefer to say it. And uh, that's a just kind of an analysis of what we've done so far. I think we can summarize that the faster the uh, waveform rises, the more square it is, I guess is another way of saying that, that the higher the harmonics are. And if you remember when we did the sawtooth, it also had a lot of high frequency harmonics because it has that one edge there that's very, 
very, very fast. So if we can slow it down, we have less harmonics. If we slow it down all the way so we end up with a sine wave, we have zero harmonics. We'll be doing a little bit of dealing with that. I think my very next uh, post will be a little bit about how this applies to a lot of things besides just music. There's a lot of things where this, this applies. It goes all the way from power where we're dealing with 60 hertz in America, 50 hertz over in uh, Europe. And I'm not sure about the Asian countries, which standard they use. But 50 hertz over in Europe, 60 hertz in America. Uh, and there's getting to be a lot of harmonics problems in power. And we'll try to deal with a few of those. I'm going to see if I can simulate them because I'm curious myself. And then... Uh, even in ham radio, there's an issue of something called key clicks that happens with, uh, with what's called CW or Morse code. Uh, that also is harmonic related. And also in radio, back in the CB days, there was people that liked to overmodulate. <laughs> and uh, that caused clipping of the waveforms of the voice. That created harmonics and caused something called splatter. And they were all over the uh, radio, <laughs> all over the whole band. Uh, so, <laughs> there's a whole lot to do with harmonics. I'm sure that there's stuff even in uh, light. I don't know it. Uh, but harmonics is a nice issue to understand and get a kind of get your head wrapped around uh, waveforms like Tesla coils since they zap that coil every so often and then the coil starts swinging back and forth through its, uh, its sinusoid sine wave uh, my guess is it's not a pure sine wave and there's probably a whole lot of harmonics created in Tesla coils uh, so it's an interesting subject, and it's another old way of looking at the world. Another dimension, if that's the kind of talk you like to use. Uh, so it's another way of looking at the world. Appreciate you listening. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching this. I uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully I'm not rambling too uh, too much. Uh, we're trying to go a little bit into the. Uh, Yes, esoteric. <laughs> wow, big words. Uh, into a little bit into the general scope of this, instead of just all boring frequency and math and boring, uh, boring stuff. And as I say, we zoom out, zoom in. So we've been zooming in a lot. So we're going to zoom out a little bit, especially in the next, uh, the next post, which will probably end up being just a post and maybe an audio. Uh, I may have something to do with video on it. Anyhow, thanks a bunch.